the Iranian revolution, in the last 30 years, of course, there has been a tremendous growth in the field of Iranian studies. And as such, our representation at Mesa, Middle East Studies Association, has grown. This year, for example, in San Diego, Mesa is featuring a series of roundtable conversations on recent developments in Iran. But of course, you know, anything from ancient Iran to medieval Iran to modern Iran, Persian literature, anthropology, sociology, First uh, Middle Eastern uh, Studies Conference. All kinds of disciplines of Iranian studies are represented with both old and young scholars getting together, presenting papers, uh, offering the result of the research, and therefore getting a, a, a feel for the discipline. Professor Kazem today, it's really a great pleasure to see you. Um, you probably don't remember, but um, around 1979, I took a seminar with you when you were uh, Master of Davenport College uh, at Yale University. I do remember. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, then you retired and uh, moved to uh, California. Um, and it is a great pleasure to see you now at the Middle Eastern Studies Association meeting because primarily you are known yes, as a historian of Russia. So, uh, but of course uh, all of those of us who uh, work on Iran also know uh, your work um, and uh, perhaps you would like to say a few things about how your work on Russian history is related to uh, Iranian history. In working on Russian history, I was primarily interested in uh, Russian imperial history, the history of Russian imperialism. And obviously Iran is one of the objectives of uh, Russian imperial history. And so I began to read up on Iran mm -hmm. and uh, first produced a number of articles, like the one you mentioned about the Cossack Brigade. Yes, that's a classic and article. One or two other articles about the construction, or rather the impediment mm -hmm. to the construction of uh, railways in mm -hmm. Iran. Mm -hmm. And finally, a big book which was not just about Russia and Iran, mm -hmm. but also had to include Britain. Right. Because the activities of these two countries were so intertwined right. that it was impossible to write about one right. without the other. Right. It is my great pleasure that, to invite uh, President Hussein Shahavi to come to the podium for the transition of power. <laughs> Well, I have very little time, and um, I always like to be brief, so I will be brief on this occasion as well. Uh, first of all, I have to say that this is a hard act to follow. Uh, few people have uh, contributed as much to the functioning and to the success of the association as uh, Mama Tabakoli has. He has has uh, rebooted uh, the uh, organization, uh, put it on a sound financial basis, um, institutionalized it, and so on. There is a Russian proverb, and if you hear my Russian accent, you will forgive me. There is a Russian proverb that says, when there is no fish, a crayfish is fish. <laughs> More than 50 years ago, there were very few people in this country that bothered about Iran. There was no association of Iranian studies. Iran was terra incognita. And at that time, when Harvard University in 1956 or 57 wanted somebody to teach modern Iranian history, they invited me. Well, because there was nobody else.